Hello, my name is Epic Bubble, and I sometimes go by the name of Simon, and this is a board game special. This, if you like me, is trying to figure out how to survive Christmas. Now, you might have family visiting, you might be staying with friends, but you're trying to get to the idea of giving presents out, and how do you get to lunch, and really you want to kind of sneak some board games into it. So these are my top six, or at least my choice, of six games, or at least six type of games, that you should probably be looking at if you want to get to Christmas, and if you want to make it to New Year. So, without further ado, let's just get started. First up, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is a wonderful time. It's cold outside, well, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're like me, it's currently summer and boiling hot each night. Unlike tonight, which is weirdly enough a bit more chilly. But that's besides the point. Honestly, what you're most likely going to be doing is you're most likely going to be rummaging through your stockings. I know in my family we normally open up stockings the night before Christmas, so on Christmas Eve. And generally it's filled with a bunch of like knickknacks, so probably toys or pieces of um, generally doodads I want to say. So like small figurines, that kind of stuff. So what you're really looking for if you want to give a board game into a uh, stocking is something that's small, something that's relatively cheap because this is not where your Christmas budget is going to be going to, and something that you can probably play the night that you pull it out of. So you want something like Timelines Invention, a game that is fast, probably only going to take you about 15 minutes to play, but you can play multiple times, and also the rules aren't complicated. So probably if you even if you are uh, playing the 10-year-olds or 8-year-olds, they can still fully understand the rules, and you probably can learn the rules in about five minutes. Timelines is a really fantastic game. I just love the data, everything, and trying to work out when inventions showed up. It's so like the difference between when the rubber band was made versus when the electrical electric light was first invented is fantastic. Of course, there are other choices. So maybe, for example, you prefer animals. There are timelines of that. Or maybe you prefer diversity or events. Really, there's a nice choice. And so if you have, like, maybe three children or probably three people that you're doing Christmas stockings for, you can get like three different ones and then put them all together, which is a really nice combination. Anyway, something light and something easy. Next up, of course, is Christmas Day. And if you like me, generally you open up presents at about 10 o'clock. For us, it's normally wake up at 8, probably shower, then have breakfast, and then you have to get everyone together and then you get to open up presents. There's no longer a case of like running down the stairs at 6 o'clock in the morning to open presents. Uh, at least that's what we do in my family. But really, when you want to go for a nice board game pre present, you have to look at the person, right? You have to figure out what they like, and that can be a bit complicated. So really what you want to do is try and get something as middle of the road as possible, something that you know will be generally quite good, and something that the person will be excited for. So, my recommendation is Fallout. This is a new game by Fantasy Flight Games, and it just has all the Fallout trappings to it. So, you're surviving in the wasteland, you can experience a story, go out and cl collect weapons and fight monsters. Really good. But it's middle of the ground. It's got a good theme to it. It is made by a very reliable company, and the production value is going to be really good. And even if the person isn't particularly into the theme, or even if the p person's particularly into the story aspect, or maybe the mechanics don't really take them, it's a good middle of the ground choice. So that's really what I suggest, is get something that is still gonna excite a person, but it's a safe bet. After that, it's of course after lunch. So after opening their presents, generally you wait until like 12 or one o'clock, and that's when all the family get together and you then have lunch. This normally is going to be what? Cold meat, salad? Don't know. Depends on what you guys do for lunch. Um, but in my family, that's what we do. But after that, you kind of get a bit tired. You kind of are a bit exhausted of all the Christmas spirit. And really, you just want to kind of sit back and relax and not deal with anything too heavy or try and get involved into anything too much. And so that's why I've chosen something like Takedo by Anton Bowser. This is a lovely game about the legendary route of Tokyo to Ka uh, to Kaido, uh, not Tokyo to y Kyoto, and traveling that route, and you're just experiencing new culture, you're going to make artwork, you're going to eat fancy food, and you're just going to have a really good time in the hot springs. But this is something that I think is ideal for that after lunch period, where again, the rules aren't too complicated, 
and it's not going to take too long. It's probably going to be about 40 mi 45 minutes to an hour. But what's really great is that it just feels like a relaxation. You're not fighting with anyone. You're not trying to compete too much. The game does, of course, have some variants to make it a bit more nasty. But really, it's so nice. This, it's so zen-like. It's almost a perfect fit for what a game should be after a heavy Christmas lunch. Then, it's Christmas Eve. No, it's the Eve of Christmas. Y you know what I mean. You're sitting by the fire. Everyone has probably played with their presents now, has gone off. Everyone's now covered from the Christmas lunch and have maybe had a light supper. You probably have sitting around having hot chocolate and probably some tea. And what you want is a nice family game. A game that you can get everyone together and that everyone can be involved with. So even if a person is 10 years old, or even if it's your grandmother, who's not really good at playing games, you want something that everyone can be a part of. And so that's why I've chosen something like Consulting Detective Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. There are new versions that have come out. Uh, this one, Thames Murder, and other cases, that's probably the classic one. Uh, there's the Jack the Ripper one, which is probably not... I think that's also as good, but really, uh, you don't want anything that's too gritty. Sherlock Holmes can be a bit, um, well, it's murder, right? It's not the greatest thing in the world, so it can be a bit serious. But I think if you're playing with anyone from ages like 13 and up, I think it's just fine. And it's nice to get involved. It's nice to be Sherlock Holmes and try and figure out what's going on, and then you kind of present all your answers, and then Sherlock Holmes actually tells you that, no, you're completely wrong, and you shouldn't have thought like that. And it's a very Sherlock Holmes way. But again, it's a game that fits into that category of just getting the family together. It's everything it's everything people can work towards. Something else would be something like Pandemic. That's a great choice for a game that everyone can just work together and have the rest of the Christmas enjoying each other's company. Of course, after Christmas comes Boxing Day. So typically for us, uh, Christmas is generally the day we spend with family. And then, of course, Boxing Day is the game we or the day we typically spend with our friends we normally invite people over for lunch and whatnot so really what you want is a game that will appeal to a large variety of friends a game that has maybe a cute theme to it a game that kind of keeps the christmas spirit going so the kind of goodwill to all men and joy to the world that kind of stuff you won't really want a game like that so again something that's not maybe too like harsh or too competitive and that's a nice fit. Bunny Kingdoms by Richard Garfield, I think, is a great example of this. Of course, there are other games, and you can leave a comment below if you maybe have a different thought. But that's really what Boxing Day, to me, is all about. Getting friends over and just having a good time. And I think Bunny Kingdoms fits into that perfectly. Of course, maybe something that's not Christmas or Christmas Day, but something that's still part of the whole festive season, and that is, of course, New Year's, the final end to a year. Really, this is going to a party or this is going to hang out with your friends. You're probably going to have far too much to drink, but that's a good thing. Kind of forget your troubles of the year. And you want a game that's a party game. Hands down, plain and simple. You want a game that can cater towards a large variety of people. So if it's a small gathering of like 10 people, or maybe it's like a large gathering of up to 30 people. You want a game that can accommodate all of those people. Generally, you want to try and find a good time to play. So on New Year's Eve, what's going to happen is people are going to ha probably arrive. You're probably going to have some dinner of sorts, and then you're probably going to start drinking. Typically, what you want to do is you want to break up the board game before everyone gets too drunk. So probably after the first glass of wine that's gone around. My recommendation, two rooms in a room, hands down. It can manage all the way up to, I think, 35 people. It's just a lot of fun to just see people kind of like, like not not stumble around, but you want them to still understand the rules. And you also don't want the rules, again, to be too complicated. Two rooms in a room kind of fits the bill perfectly. People can be put onto either side. And you can have a nice... It just gets people to start talking together. It kind of forms a nice icebreaker if the ice hasn't been broken yet. It's a really good choice. And, of course, the theme is quite funny in that you have a person that basically wants to blow up the presents. And you have to have hostage situations. It's just a really good choice. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed my selection of games. And I hope you have a really, really good Christmas. And, of course, a happy New Year's. If you have enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe. This just helps me get more views on YouTube. And that means more people come to the channel, which means I can just put out more and more content. Because it means more and more people are watching it. 
And uh, as always, please leave some comments. I love seeing what you guys write. I have some wonderful comments on some previous videos. And maybe you don't think, maybe you don't think Tombs and the Boom is the perfect choice. Maybe you think games like Monikers or Secret Hitler or The Resistance are just better choices for that kind of scenario. Maybe you think that Kaido wasn't the best choice for an after lunch. Maybe you shouldn't be playing games after a heavy, heavy Christmas lunch. But please let me know in the comment, comment section. As always, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.